one of the benefits that, that comes from being able to put a list of things down onto a piece of paper is that I'm now able to identify some of those tasks that I can get done at the same time or with overlapping resources. So on my list of things, I need to organize a promotional video for a product of one of my businesses. I also need to, to organize some product photography. Now, there is no reason that I wouldn't be able to employ the same person who's doing the video for me to help me with the product photos. But if I wasn't able to identify those things on my list, I would tackle each one of those tasks separately. And what would be 30 minutes here, 45 minutes there, I can condense into one 45 minute task. By doing that, I've just freed myself up with an extra 30 minutes, 30 minutes of time that I can use to be productive. And for me, 30 minutes of time represents maybe 5% of a working day. And that is a, is a big uplift in productivity. If I can add 5% to, to every day, uh, then instead of being able to, to do 100 things in a week, I can do 105. And those five extra things compounded over a year adds up to a real difference in the outcomes that I'll be able to achieve over the course of 52 weeks. Now, Chris has been trained. I actually, uh, I think I met him just days after we were training with John Grinder, one of the creators of NLP over in Bali. Uh, and then we, we met up a few times and he's come over to, to Bali and done the training. And he's also ran, I think, three or four NLP courses with me online. So it's a great pleasure to have him here today. I really appreciate you coming, Chris. And just before you do start, we're going to have about uh, 80 minutes do feel free to turn your camera on and get engaged. If you're eating food, turn it off. If you want to go to the bathrooms, you know where it is. You know where the fire escape is. If you want to ask questions, Chris, do you prefer questions to come out as we go or in the chat yeah. window? Yeah, this is a fairly flexible forum. So if you've got a question, then just uh, stick your hand up either virtually or physically and, and we'll uh, take questions as they come. Another great indicator is having your microphone on mute. So it's great that you have your phones and microphones on mute. When you go to speak or you have a question, if you turn your microphone open, we will see that and uh, we'll also know you have a question. Now, one other thing I want to share before we get into it, the mind works. There's a famous book, Thinking Fast and Slow. We, we have a common division of the mind, conscious and unconscious, right? Or thinking fast, thinking slow. The conscious is very limited. The unconscious is the supercomputer. As we talk and as you talk, when you talk, do you ever think what words will come out of your mouth? You may think, I'm going to talk about this, but generally the words just come, the words just flow like your heart. It just beats. The unconscious is the supercomputer. And most of us do not have our supercomputer and conscious minds set up for success. They often end up misaligned. And as much as you can consciously understand a subject like overwhelm, we need to get the strategies for handling overwhelm from the conscious down to the unconscious, right? So we want to fully open up, relax. And if Chris shares anything you disagree with, I would encourage you to listen twice as much. Anything controversial, listen twice as much because he's going to share some magic with you to help you understand and reduce task overwhelm. Good? All right. Thank you, Adrian. <laughs> I'll shut uh, up now. I've, Thank you. I've, I've had the chance to, to meet a couple of you in person and, and a chance to... Uh, almost meet a couple of you in person as well i have i have a difficult a difficult to describe life uh anybody who meets me is able to see a small portion of what it is that i that i actually do right now i'm i'm standing in bangkok uh i was in london just a couple of days ago and and a few days before that i was in the uk 
I have different interests in different parts of the world. Uh, and from time to time, I get the opportunity to come and hang out with Adrian, uh, either virtually or in Bali or wherever it is that we happen to find ourselves next. And we get to exchange some ideas. Uh, one of the things that I like to do is from my global travels is share some of the discoveries that I make with some of the people that I hang out with as I bounce around the world. I get different perspectives from people in Panama or Turkey, California, New York, and some of my experiences back in Australia. And so tonight, I'd like to share with you some of the things that I do to tackle when I have task overwhelm. I do a lot. And sometimes I find myself in a situation where I've taken off, uh, I've taken on more than I can pull off. And when I find myself in those situations, I need to remind myself of the strategies that I can use to be able to manage myself and manage my mental well-being as I try and proceed through the list of things that I have to do and tackle the problems that come my way. Things don't ever go smoothly. Uh, in all of the things that I have ever done, there's never been a straight path from A to B. There's always been hiccups, there's been speed bumps, there's been setbacks and delays. And so it's a, a case of knowing what it is that I want to do and being able to get myself to that target. Tonight, we're going to talk about task overwhelm. And I, I started today by doing what I like to do every Sunday, and that is put together a list of things that I need to do. And so just on a single page, I put together a list of all of the things that I would like to try and accomplish in the next week. Uh, now, these are specific tasks, but some are poorly defined. Uh, so one of the things I need to do is for one of my businesses, I need to file for a particular tax, a different business. I need to file paperwork for an import license. I don't know what those things are going to entail. I will need to rely on the advice of experts in those areas to be able to guide me through that process. But I know what it is that I want to achieve. I just don't know how to do it. So as part of this little exercise, I make some notes about some of the things that I'm going to need, additional resources that I'll need to be able to pull off that task. The task itself is, sorry, the task list is divided up into those things which might take 20 minutes, those things that might take two days. Uh, there's no differentiation on my list as to those things that I can do whilst I'm standing in an elevator and those things that I'm going to need to enlist the help of others. They're just there, so I know what it is that I would like to do. I have no expectation that I will get all of those things done. I know that it is not possible. And so I've started the week with recognizing that I have an aspirational list, but it is nowhere near recognizable as realistic. I'm comfortable with that. I know that those are the things that I want to get done, and plenty of those can carry over into next week. But that's what I like to do on a, on a Sunday. Sunday is my time to reflect on those things that didn't get done last week and carry them forward into the following week, assuming that they're still necessary. I find myself putting things on my list of things to do, and they stay there for a really long time until I recognize the fact that if they were that important, I would have got them done, either out of necessity or out of desire. A lot of times, people like to hold on to tasks. I don't know why. Having having a long to-do list maybe makes them feel good. There's there's different motivations for different people, but but that's that's how some people like to operate. I have a, a list of things which I'd like to cover, and we'll see how much of it that I get through. Uh, and if anybody has any questions or would like some clarification as we go along, feel free to jump in, and I'll answer that and and clarify or redefine as best I can. Um, but I'd like to start with something that might not be so easy for people to hear and, and might get some pushback. And that is most task overwhelm is self-inflicted. Most people, most of the time, have too much to do because they give themselves too much to do. It's the sad reality that a lot of that despair and disappointment comes from your internal desire to achieve. They say that when you want something done, ask a busy person. I think that that's close to the truth. 
And that is that if you want something done, ask a productive person. Because very, very often we we misdefine being busy as being productive. Uh, and if we're filling 12, 14 hours a day doing tasks, we feel like we're being productive. When in actual fact, we're just being busy. Uh, starting by having a list of things that you want to get accomplished is going to help to define what it is that you actually want to get done. Uh, if if you get that sense of achievement from being busy, I'd like you to take a moment and ask yourself if you're saying to other people that you're incredibly busy or by saying, I've got so much to do, look at my list of, of tasks, there's no way that I'll be able to get this done. I'm working so hard. I can't even have time. I don't even have time to have lunch. Or if at the end of the day, when you're catching up with friends, when you talk about your life, you say, I have got so much done. This week, I was able to do X, Y, Z, or Z. Uh, and, and these are the things that I have been able to demonstrate uh, as done. These are tasks that are complete. Rather than looking at all of the things that remain undone, looking at the things that you have done. When people are in the state of task overwhelm, one of the things that can happen, and this is a good way to recognize that you are overwhelmed, is that you're doing 50 different things, but none of them are getting done. Uh, for the case of uh, somebody who's setting up a coaching business, and Adrian, you and I have seen this quite a lot, there is a list as long as your arm of things that need to get done. I need I need a logo. I need a website. I need to to write my uh, my product offering. I need to get client testimonials. I need to, I need to, I need to. There's there's this sense of overwhelm of having all of this stuff to do. And yes, that is one of the things that that you do need to do. Or sorry, that that list contains all of the things that you might need to do. But are those things the things that need to be done now? Uh, when, when we are talking about this, we can talk about tasks coming from internal or external. Some people who are juggling family, uh, a job, and a business, there's going to be a mixture of those things that are external, family, soccer training, kids sick, uh, got to clean the kitchen, there's the repairs that need to be done to the bathroom. All of these things are external. They're assigned to you. And then there are those things that you assign to yourself. If you experience this task overwhelm, identifying which of those things are externally assigned and internally assigned is going to help you to determine which of those things need to be tackled first. If you're assigning yourself tasks and you've already been given too much to do, then probably give yourself a break and say, okay, I understand that I would like to get these things done, but I have this other stuff that has been assigned to me by other people, whether it's family or employment, I'm going to tackle this first. Instantly, you're going to be giving yourself breathing room and be able to concentrate on those things that need to be done rather than all of the things that you want to get done. If you're able to do that, then that release of pressure is going to provide you with clarity of mind or the mental, uh, the mental resources to be able to accomplish things. Adrian. I just want to add in there, Chris, you know, when I have a list of things that need to be done and I know I need to do them, simply the weight of having these, the weight becomes overwhelming. And from that weight, it's very hard for me to accomplish any of it. Right. So if we're feeling all that need, it gets very hard to do just one of it. And that comes from a, you know, a neuroscience perspective, because back in the day, a need would be like collecting food or running away from a lion. But today the need is to go on social media or to get a client, but it still has that physiological effect of slowing us down and the, the pressure, you know, we're not designed to feel so much pressure. We're not designed to have a list like that and actually get through it. Couldn't agree with you more, Adrian. Could not agree more. Uh, and one of those, one of those things, sorry, something else. No, I'm just going to jump in the room next door for a moment. Okay. Yep. We'll see you, see you when you come back. Uh, one of those things 
which I think is an important thing to, to be able to differentiate, is being busy and feeling busy. Those days where I have a lot of things to do and I'm accomplishing things, I am busy, but I feel productive. Those days where I'm putting that same amount of effort into tasks, but I'm not able to tick those things off the list, I feel busy. I don't feel productive. And and that feeling, uh, that, at least for me, that feeling can drive myself into uh, a sense of accomplishment or a sense of frustration and despair, like I'll never get anything done. I saw a comment come up. I didn't get to read all of it. Excuse me a second while I bring that little chat window up. Yes, Stephanie, I do agree with that in part. Uh, although I don't know who Stephanie is, I can't see a Stephanie on my screen. How very confusing. Anyway, um, I, I will I will answer that shortly. Um, so one of the things that I mentioned was that I put together a list, uh, a task list of things that I know that I will not be able to get done. But without me putting together a list of things, I have a list that exists only in my mind and it can take up as much space as it wants to in my mind. My mind can run amok and, and I can say that I'll never be able to get this list done. By putting it down on a piece of paper as I have, it allows me to be able to say, okay, my list is actually finite. It's not an unlimited list of things to do. There are only 40 things on my list. And that means that now I, I have a list of things rather than having an unlimited variety of unknown tasks that need to be accomplished. By having the list, I can see it. I can put a boundary around that and I can say, all right, I know exactly what it is that I have to do. As opposed to if I don't have it on a piece of paper, I'll get those flickering reminders. Oh, you need to organize that employment contract. Oh, you need to send that email to the accountant. Oh, you need to do this. Oh, you need to do this. And those disruptive thoughts will come at those times where I'm trying to be productive. By putting them and setting them aside, I can tackle those things one at a time, or two at a time, or three at a time. One of the benefits that, that comes from being able to put a list of things down onto a piece of paper is that I'm now able to identify some of those tasks that I can get done at the same time or with overlapping resources. So on my list of things, I need to organize a promotional video for a product of one of my businesses. I also need to, to organize some product photography. Now. There is no reason that I wouldn't be able to employ the same person who's doing the video for me to help me with the product photos. But if I wasn't able to identify those things on my list, I would tackle each one of those tasks separately. And what would be 30 minutes here, 45 minutes there, I can condense into one 45 minute task. By doing that, I've just freed myself up with an extra 30 minutes, 30 minutes of time that I can use to be productive. And for me, 30 minutes of time represents maybe 5% of a working day. And that is a, is a big uplift in productivity. If I can add 5% to, to every day, uh, then instead of being able to, to do 100 things in a week, I can do 105. And those five extra things compounded over a year adds up to a real difference in the outcomes that I'll be able to achieve over the course of 52 weeks. The next thing that I wanted to talk about was being able to prioritize and sequence my little list of things. I know that there are some things on my list that if I get them done, there will be a measurable difference in the outcomes of the week. Uh, one of the things on here is I'd like to order a new laptop. The laptop that I have is probably on its last legs, not going to see me through the rest of the year. But do I need to organize uh, a purchase of a new laptop this week? No. It's not one of the things that is a priority in the same way 
that I need to organize the shipment of a container from Bangkok to Nevada. That's something that needs to happen. If I don't do it this week, if I miss that window, then I'm going to miss the deadline that that container is is tied to. So these are some of the things that, again, having having it on a list, I'm allowed. I'm allowing myself the time to prioritize those things. And I already know that there are things on here like getting the new laptop and going to the tailor to to buy a new dinner suit. That's not going to get done next week either. Uh, and so I can I can move those things off my list of things to do this week. And now I've shaved my list of forty things down to thirty eight. And all I've done is start talking about it. My list is already starting to look slightly more manageable because I have it down on paper and I can organize it in a way that is priority order. Once I've prioritized those things, then I can start to tackle what do I want to do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And that is going to give me clarity before I even start the week of what my week is going to look like. I know that there are going to be things that aren't on that list that are going to pop up and have to get done, but it has allowed me to give myself a bit of structure for how I'm going to start tackling my week. By doing that, my week doesn't look quite so daunting as it did prior to me setting up a list and putting that list into a framework of work for the week. Uh, now, a moment ago, Stephanie mentioned that if she doesn't, do the things that are on her list of things that she wants to do and only does the things that are externally provided to her, that she'll never get any of those things done. If she takes the approach of, of recognizing all of those external things and puts them onto that list, puts it into all of the things that she would like to accomplish during the week, then there is a chance that within all of those things that she'd like to get done during the week, she might be able to identify some time to be able to tackle the things that she would like to get done. I'm not saying that that's a guarantee, but it's a good first step. I do know people that are so busy doing the things that need to get done that they never get stuff done that they want to get done. We just spoke about the things that must get done versus the things that you want to do and, and recognizing that uh, those things that must be done, uh, things that are usually a necessity for things like job and family and and whatnot. And I've just ruined the screen, so I'll have to ignore that. Um, but I would like to talk about, and again, I'll use my my own list as a as a reference point. Those things which are daily tasks versus a long term project. Now, for me, I have a, a number of things on here. One of which is to prepare a presentation that I would need to give in November. It's going to take me a matter of weeks to be able to pull together the resources, the people, the information that I'm going to need to be able to make that presentation. I need to start that presentation now, whatever now is, but I need to start the presentation now so that by the time it rolls around in November, I'm not trying to do it in the last three days before I fly to Vancouver to actually make the presentation. If I don't do that now, if I don't start that long-term project now, I'm going to set myself up for overwhelm. Won't be today, it'll be in November. But I know that it's on my list and that if I start it today and I take incremental progress, if I make incremental progress towards finalizing that project, it's going to make my life a lot, lot easier. And no, that's not a task. It's a long-term goal, but it's still on that list there. Uh, and by able by being able to do that, I can recognize as I make progress towards completing that task. Uh, I, I imagine myself with a, a a container that gets filled up, and as I chip away at it, I pour a little bit more liquid into that container. I start to see the progress being made, and I can recognize that and reward myself. Uh, and by rewarding myself, I just mean I can say that's a job well done. And that's enough for me to feel motivated and, and keep moving on to the next thing. It's important not to confuse a task and a goal. And what I mean by that is, and for some of the people that, that work as coaches or setting up a, a new small business, one of those things that can find their way onto a list is I need to get 300 more followers on Instagram 
or I need to get X number of views onto my website, or I need to get some number of signups to my email list. Those things are all goals. They're things that you would like to achieve, but they're not actually a task that you can do. The task that you would be able to do was, would be something like, I want to film, edit, and caption six reels for Instagram that I'll be able to publish throughout the week. That is a task. The objective that you're trying to get to is an additional 300 followers. Uh, now, whether or not that's actually something that you need to do that's going to get you towards the goal of being a successful coach or a new startup, that's a question that you probably would have to ask yourself there. Uh, because a lot of times people think that just because a, a task is done by other people uh, that they need to do it themselves, it's not always the case. In fact, it's quite rarely the case where replicating what other people do is going to yield success for you. Uh, now, I would like to give you a task as to what is your motivation for doing these things. Now, Stephanie was just saying that one of her one of her motivators was being able to relieve pressure from her brother by doing things for her mother. And I'm assuming that a motivator for that is so that everybody can have a slightly easier life and be able to go about their lives with less stress, uh, even though part of that motivation is putting an incredible burden on herself. Uh, other people, like perhaps uh, Farah, she might be able to, to think about what her motivators are in what she tries to get done in a week. Uh, a variety of different motivators are probably going to be finding their way as to as to why it is that you would like to be getting things done. Emily, are you still around? I saw you on camera shortly after we started, but not sure if you're still there. I am, give me a second. <laughs> I, hang on a second, camera is on. Yeah, I'm here. Hello. Uh, Hi. Now, Emily and I have been able to, to meet and spend some time in Bali. And when we were when we were last chatting, uh, there were a few things that Emily had on her list of things to do, and one of those things was to bring some of Emily Bali back to England. Uh, mm -hmm. Just wondering, is is uh, that still on your list of things to do? To be a little bit more Bali, Emily? Uh, yes. Uh, and going back to work tomorrow after the summer off, that will definitely be top of my list to see how I can bring that version of myself into work. Excellent. Um, do you mind sharing what your motivation for that is? Um, the feeling better about everything. So when you're in, a, when you have a positive mindset, it's not just kind of, a, it's not just being productive. It's not just doing the things that you need to get done. It's doing things with a positive mindset and making it, making things more enjoyable to do. Um, so Bali was like six months ago now. So life was definitely easier. Work was definitely easier with a more positive mindset. So I remind myself of that. And my colleagues remind me of that as well. Um, and they, they do call, oh, sorry, they do call me Bali Emily sometimes. <laughs> Partly Emily. She's a little bit. That's not, the, yeah. that's not a bad nickname to have. No. Thank you. Um, now, one of the things that, uh, that Emily was just talking about there doesn't have much of a time constraint. It's, it's something that she would probably have on her list of things to do for the foreseeable future uh, to remind herself to, to be a little bit more Bali Emily, uh, which I, that's growing on me, that name, now that now that you've uh, raised that. Um, on my list of things to do, I I have not yet, but will do before the, the week starts, put a number of time constraints around around my list of things to do. Um, I've got I've got a number of things, including for me to file my corporate taxes. Now that's that's a task that's going to take quite a while because I'm going to need to go and find documents and uh, find invoices, find receipts and be able to put all of that bundle together to send off to an accountant to prepare all of that. That's something which is going to take much more time than, say, uh, 
making payment for an invoice that I've just received over the weekend. I recognize that. And when I'm putting together my list of things to do for the week, I like to assign an amount of time that I spend on something for that week. If something absolutely needs to be done in that week, I allow myself an almost unlimited amount of time because it's important and needs to get done and there is a deadline. But for some of those things, uh, like for paying paying an invoice, I, I give myself a small window of time. I bundle all of those things that just take a small window of time and I put them into just one bucket. And I try and tackle that bucket all at once. And I usually start the week by doing that bucket of small tasks so that my list of 40 impossible things can be whittled down to just 20 remaining things for the remainder of the week. Because there are probably 20 things on this list, which all can be done in between 5 and 15 minutes. If I can get those things done before lunchtime on Monday, my list of things to do is going to look a lot less overwhelming than the 40 things that are currently sitting on that. Uh, and if I'm able to do that, then I'm going to be able to start the week with a sense of achievement, uh, which is going to propel me going through the rest of the week. Uh, like I mentioned, recognizing those, those tasks that are bigger and being a little bit flexible to make sure that you're not uh, short selling yourself and giving yourself enough time to be able to do those things is an important an important essence one thing in particular that i see with people that suffer from task overwhelm perpetual or chronic task overwhelm is that they're a task hoarder just like that that tv show hoarders uh, where people spend their lifetime collecting things and never throwing anything out whether it's newspapers, magazines, or food. Uh, these people, they just end up with a life that's cluttered, not particularly conducive to being productive. People do that with tasks as well. Sometimes people hold on to a task until it is well past its usefulness. Uh, if, if I had any of these things that were on my list for more than a month, I would recognize that those things had not, in spite of my, my conscious mind, recognizing that they were important, it would be an indicator to me that they actually weren't that important. Uh, and I would ask myself seriously if I was ever going to do them or if doing them was going to make my life better. But I would, I would ask myself seriously whether or not it had any business maintaining its position on my list of things to do. I worked with a guy once upon a time and he was always busy. Like he was just busy. He'd get there before I would. He'd leave after I did. He always seemed busy. Lunch at his desk and never any time to help anybody else, which was fine because his job was, was largely around accounting. He had a filing system. Uh, he had three filing cabinets in his office. Uh, and he had them organized uh, where he had the current month, the previous month, and the month before that. So all of the things that he had to do this month, last month, and the month before. If by the time the end of that current month uh, had rolled around, if there were still tasks from three months ago that hadn't been done, he put them in the bin. He put them in the trash. Because those were things that clearly didn't need to get done. Within the last three months, no one had raised a fuss to the point where that needed to get done. He hadn't been motivated to do them. They clearly weren't important to him, and so he discarded them. Uh, Jay, I saw you just posted something there, task avoidance, but I was mid mid thought. Uh, what's the difference between task holding and task avoidance? Ah, that is a, a good distinction to make, Jay. Task avoidance, also known as procrastination, is usually a function of either not having the interest or not having the skills to be able to perform whatever task it is that's on that list. Procrastination is sometimes uh, the enemy that uh, that is ours when it comes to productivity and, and getting things done. Um, procrastination, if you can remind me after after I wrap this up and when we're talking, uh, I will talk a little bit about that procrastination and how procrastination can be a, a real killer of our productivity here. 
the uh, yes, so be be important with yourself and and that those things that are on your list and stay on your list and never get done, uh, decide when it is that it's time to let that go. Uh, is it actually important? Uh, and if it if it is important, get it done. If it's not important, let it go. Uh, we We can be in love with having too many things to do. Uh, it can become part of our identity. So when we are talking to people, they're expecting us to say, oh, I'm so busy, I'm so busy. Uh, and that's largely because we keep too many things on our list of things to do that we'll probably never do. Uh, the important thing, uh, and this comes a little bit into, into what Jay was, was asking about avoidance, forget the idea of perfection. Forget it completely. There, there is no reason to have anything on your list that you will only do if it can be perfect. One of the things on my list here is uh, I need a, a new logo and some business cards for a, a persona that I need to adopt in a couple of weeks. I need to get the, the business cards printed now so they're in my luggage so I can take them with me. Uh, so that needs to get done this week. Does it matter if I don't come up with a logo and I just create the business cards? No, it does not. Uh, does it matter if I come up with a logo that's unsatisfactory? Nope, not at all. Uh, anybody who I hand a business card to is going to look at my email address and telephone number, and that's the only information that they're going to take away. Uh, I, I would find things are going to be easier if I have the business card to hand to people, so I'll get it done but I don't need to have a perfect logo. I don't need to spend three hours discussing, debating with myself, the perfect font, the perfect color, the perfect size. None of those things matter. I want to get the task done. And so I'm going to aim for good enough and do a little bit more than that because I want it done. It doesn't need to be perfect. It's not going to be the difference between me and a $5 million deal because the people that I'm talking to aren't going to care. So good enough and a little bit is all I'm going to be aiming for on that task. If I wanted it to be perfect, I would need to spend hours to be able to satisfy myself. It wouldn't be a 15 minute job. It would be two, three, four hours. If I was aiming for perfection, I'd probably never get there. And that task would never get done and it would stand in the way of me doing all of the other things on my list because I wanted it to be perfect. Now, that's not going to work for me and, and my list of things to do. Perfection is the enemy of progress. Uh, perhaps Jay might recognize a, a little bit of that. Yes, it, it can happen. Uh, the, the other thing uh, which I wanted to, to make mention of is to utilize what might seem like dead time unproductive time. There's a few things here on my list that I could probably get done whilst I was standing in an elevator. I need to reset a password to be able to log into an account so I can pay some rent. I could do that password reset while I'm standing in an elevator. I can tick one thing off my list of things to do when I'm going down from the 25th floor. I can get it, I can get it done. Uh, there's a couple of other things here that I can probably get done whilst I'm waiting for uh, an Uber or a Grab or a DD or wherever I might be. Uh, there's there's plenty of opportunities to be able to use what would otherwise be unproductive time to get some little things off that list of things to do. Uh, and again, the more things you get off that list, the better you're going to feel and the less overwhelming that task list is going to look. Uh, Ask for help. It might seem silly, but if you have too many things to do, ask for help. Uh, I don't think that there is any reason for anybody to feel that they need to do everything always exclusively by themselves. If you're attempting to, to do everything all at once uh, and get it done to a, a satisfactory level, two things are going to happen. One is you're probably going to fail. And the second is that you're probably not going to do things as well as if you had someone to help. There's some stuff on my list here where I need to I need to write 
uh, some content for a website. Uh, that's on my list, but that's something I don't think is likely to get done very well if I do it. I'm not going to give it the time or the attention. And so I'm going to ask someone, uh, someone in my network that is particularly good. It might take them 15 or 20 minutes, but if I was to try and do it, it'd take me an hour because I just don't feel very comfortable with content uh, of a technical nature for that website. So I'm going to ask someone for help. Uh, they'll likely do it. If they don't, then I'll, I'll have to tackle it myself. But if I'm able to get someone to do it and it's going to be a very small consequence to their life, 15 minutes of their time, uh, that is helpful because it removes that task eating up an hour of my time. And if I get an hour back from, from my list of things to do, that's an hour that I can tick off two, three, five things on, on this list. All of a sudden, again, I'm feeling a little bit less overwhelmed. Uh, one thought that I had as well. This isn't something where I'm rigid about it and, and I make, I make a commitment to myself to do it all the time, but I like to try and spend about 5% of my time on doing things that are going to make my life more productive. Uh, at the moment, I'm tackling a long overdue task of organizing a lot of the, the files and documents that have been sent to me over the last three or four years. I find that when people send me a request for information, I spend far longer than I should finding the information that they've requested, whether it's a corporate document, uh, certificate of good standing, maybe it's a tax return from three years ago. These are things which I haven't put into any type of filing system on my, on my computer. And so instead of it taking two minutes to get the document and email it, it takes me 15 minutes to find the document and that's not productive. And so each day I spend between five and 20 minutes organizing files, progressively going through archiving things, moving things into a filing structure so that the next time somebody asks me for it, it's there, I know where to find it, and I can send it off in two minutes and not have that task take me 15. I would say that from the, the last three weeks that I've been spending on taking little chunks out of that, I've probably already saved myself maybe two hours in this last week. People making requests for documents, and I've known exactly where they were. Just by doing that one little thing, I'm giving myself a little bit of extra breathing room because I'm trying to spend 5% of my time on making my life easier. If you're able to do that uh, and you're able to recognize that, then it's a nice little success that you get to celebrate. Adrian, I know that you're not the world's greatest filer. Uh, how, how long do you think that you waste on not being able to find information when you need it? Too much. And it only takes a little minute, often even a microsecond to organize it. But more importantly, whenever I do organize it, oh my God, I, yeah. So Adrian, you and I suffer from the same, the same debilitating illness of not handsome-itis? doing. Handsomeitis? Is that uh, handsomeitis? Yes. Handsome -itis. Handsome -itis. yes. Uh, so you and I suffer from that same debilitating illness of of not doing things uh, when we could do them. We do them when we need to do them. Uh, and I I do try and take a little bit of time when that email comes in from from my lawyer. If it's got a new set of documents, I try and file them right away, and and take the time when it's fresh, when I know where it is, I know it's new to put it where it needs to go, rather than wait six months, have the bank say, oh, we need to do a KYC refresh. We need to make sure that all of your documents are up. Send it through, then I've got to go and spend 15 minutes going through emails because I didn't file them correctly in the first place. And so that task that would have been two minutes is now 15. And 15 over the, the space of every day, twice a week, whatever that might be, uh, that's that's a huge time suck. And it's the unfortunate reality that we're oftentimes our own worst enemy when it comes to creating a scenario of task overwhelm. If we operated with a higher level of efficiency, 
we probably wouldn't find ourselves in the situation where all of a sudden our time is being eaten up by things that take too long because we didn't do them properly in the first place. Uh, basically, don't make jobs more difficult than they need to be. Adrian? Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember doing this professional coaching course in Australia about 14 years ago, and the very first thing we did was set up a folder, and it was coaching folder, and the teacher stressed everything in this folder, and it was it took us maybe 10, 20 minutes to go through it, but setting those folders up at the start, it just meant everything was organized from that point forward. And I was in uh, I was in Shanghai two months ago. I went into Bank of China. I haven't been in the Bank of China for at least six, seven years, and I had to get a new card. You could imagine. But after one hour of waiting, when I finally got to speak to the person one to one, I had all my information. And then they asked me. I was stuck. They needed a passport that had been changed. I think it was two passports ago. My original passport from 2011 they wanted. But guess what? I know digital files can be a challenge, and I can see the comment in the window there. Digital files can be a challenge, but I had all my digital files in Dropbox. So within a couple of minutes, I was able to go passport, and up came my past, pa my past passports. It is so important to get organized, but being organized or being highly disciplined isn't something that you're born with. It's just a matter of getting slightly more organized or little small habits building on top of each other. And we only need to be a little bit more organized, a little bit more disciplined than we were last week. Don't compare yourself to Chris. Don't compare yourself to Tony Robbins. Compare yourself to how you were last week. I think I think that a good question, and maybe this is uh, something to think about when you when you go to sleep at night or wake up in the morning, uh, and and this is a question which I don't particularly like because it's so vague and ambiguous and it's a difficult place to start. But what makes you happy? And being well, able to create some some definition around what makes you happy is is a good place to start. But sorry, you were going to say something. Yeah, well, it's, you know, I, I guess it's like with everyone. Um, you want to be happy for yourself, but you're also happy if your family is happy or if the people mm -hmm. close to you are happy. So in a way, um, you you do, or like I choose their happiness right now before mine, but also because their happiness make me happy. <laughs> I, I can understand that's not a catch-22, but... Uh, it's uh, it's a situation where I, I guess you're not sure if you're doing things for them or doing things for yourself, even though you are doing things for them. That's a, a slightly more complex philosophical discussion. Um, yeah. But but I do I do understand and and I I find myself drawn into that from time to time. Uh, I'll I'll have people call up. Uh, people within my network, friends, uh, people that work for me, and they'll say, hey, I've I've got this thing and I don't know how to do it. And I'll say, oh, that's fine. I'll take care of that for you. Uh, and I'm taking something off their list of things to do and putting it onto mine. I'm detracting from those things that I believe that I need to do. But the only reason why I'm doing that is because it's going to make me feel accomplished having done something. There'll be a, a self gratification. I'll be able to prove to myself once again that uh, I did something because I'm very clever uh, or I did something because I've got secret knowledge that somebody else doesn't have. And the reason, the real reason that I decide to do it is because it will increase my value in the eyes of the person. And that's my motivation. Uh, it's, it's not really about me being a nice guy and helping them. It's actually I'm just being selfish and I want to feel good. I'm not suggesting that that's what you're doing, but it is it is something that I find frustrates me that people come to me and they say, hey, I need help on this, and I do it. And I, I don't say no as often as I probably should. And I find myself adding to my list of things to do 
uh, and not getting myself further because I, I have this itch that I like to scratch occasionally. Yeah, I guess in, in some point it has those these things, um, but in, in some ways it doesn't. So I think it's like half half from depending on the task. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if if we are having this conversation and, and we've only got a couple more minutes before I I know Adrian's going to want to say something. Um, one of the things that I would that I would encourage you to do, uh, and it might be something tiny, like absolutely minuscule, but identify something that you currently have in your life that actually brings you enjoyment that doesn't involve another person uh, it might simply be cooking scrambled eggs uh, when i when i achieve the perfect scrambled egg I, I feel particularly good and it has nothing to do with anyone else it's just me doing something that i enjoy i, I enjoy the cooking process the eating process i enjoy the "Quote unquote perfection that I can sometimes achieve, uh, and and that fifteen minute process of making some scrambled eggs for breakfast is something that doesn't rely on anybody else, but I enjoy. And finding a few things like that might help you to to differentiate in your own mind those things that are your own drivers that don't rely on anybody else, and and those things that you do for other people. I want yeah, to emphasize." Gonna... I want to emphasize what Chris just said here, because this is really important. And just say you're making eggs for yourself anyway. If you're just making eggs for yourself anyway, it's an unconscious thing. But if you ask yourself the what makes you happy, and like Steph, most things that make me happy is making other people happy. But when I thought deeper about this question the last time Chris asked me this question, I thought, what does make me happy? It's all these external things. But now when I recognize that making my breakfast makes me happy and have that conscious awareness, now making breakfast for myself is one of my favorite things to do. So having conscious awareness of what makes us happy, which really comes from us, and having that conscious awareness allows us to get more satisfaction and joy. Now, there's things that you do that you enjoy anyway, but having the conscious awareness of, I do this for me. I do this because it makes me happy brings that happiness back into our control. Uh, you have my full support as well, Stephanie. And uh, Stephanie actually recorded uh, Bali 2020. Thank you very much for your work there. It was amazing. I'm going to shut up again now. In February 2024, we embarked on a transformative journey in the heart of Bali, where minds were empowered, connections were built, and breakthroughs were achieved. Hey guys, we're here having the time of our life. The time of our life. It's a combination of learning new stuff and celebrating all the growth and the transformation we've had this year. As the sun set on our time in Bali, a new adventure awaits us in Chiang Mai, 2025. Hey, a couple of important things if you wanna come down to get the most out of this. I ask everyone to make a shopping list before coming here, a shopping list. New behaviors, new beliefs, perhaps value systems, or maybe a whole new identity. So before everyone comes, they create a bit of a wish list, a bit of a shopping list. And while we're here, we make it happen. Now that pre-course, we actually include a lot of our, like the training that we sell for thousands of dollars, we actually include that in a lot of our training. So when you come along, you're gonna get access to that and go through it and make this trip absolutely dynamite for you. Join us as we continue our journey of growth and transformation. Together, we thrive. See you in Chiang Mai.